Hello, Podicumans, and welcome to the Podicesis Podcast, a podcast about what Christians believe and why it matters. I'm Brett Maddox, and once again, we're joined by your very best friends, Alan Kaysen and Jim Morrow. How are you guys doing? Man, I am happier than a dead pig in the sunshine, boys. <laughs> Man, I'm doing good. I, I don't know what that means, but I think <laughs> I it's matter. prohibited in Leviticus. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm coming to y'all from a new office. Yeah, you are. Yeah, t- I can see that. Tell us about it, man. Yeah. So uh, I uh, last time I left off, I was in Columbus, Georgia, finishing up my tenure at St. Luke, and now I am in Dublin, Georgia, actually closer to Allen. I left um, Jim's side of the state and uh, decided to come closer to Allen, and um, I'm over yes. here at Pine Forest Church. And so, so far, about 11 days in, and um, they haven't gotten rid of me yet. So, uh, what is that? A pitchfork out your window? Uh, oh, I'm no. kidding. Oh, Bad joke. Torches, it's so good to be torches. back together on these. Spend these hot summer days thinking about the things of the Lord in the air conditioning while talking to you guys. Amen. Amen. It's fantastic. Well, as always, hit us up on social media. Leave a five-star rating and review on Apple Podcasts. Uh, you can comment about episodes. Let us know if you have any questions. Questions at podakesis.com is where you can um, email us, and we would love to hear from you. And we are getting close to the end. Wait, that sounds really scary. The end. The yeah. end. The um, end is the near. end of the catechism. Um, oh. not, the, not the end of the podcast. Um, no, we are uh, we are just a few more questions away from the end of the uh, the John Wesley's revision of the shorter catechism, and we do have plans for for the future. Uh, so uh, no worries there to the tens and tens of fans that we have who are listening <laughs> listening to us today. All tens, all tens of you, and uh, we're excited about it. And we'll talk more about what we're going to be doing in the future um, uh, soon enough. Um, but right now we're going to continue in the catechism looking at question 105. We're continuing the discussion on the Lord's Prayer, and we're looking at the fifth petition. So what do we pray for in the fifth petition of the Lord's Prayer? In the fifth petition, which is, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors, we pray that God, for Christ's sake, would freely pardon all our sins, which we are the rather encouraged to ask. That's some amazing uh, old English language, I guess. <laughs> I think it was um, so then rather encouraged to ask, but okay, I think it was well, a typo in the book. It, it must be a typo in the book, but okay. But hey, so we pray that God, for Christ's sake, would freely pardon all our sins, which we are then rather encouraged to ask, because by his grace, we are enabled from the heart to forgive others. Now, wait, wait, wait. Before we continue, I've got a problem. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Yes, yes, yes. Dun, as, a, dun, dun. As, a, as a good Methodist, um, I've been brought up with uh, trespasses. Forgive us of the times that we walk onto property that is not our own. And help us to forgive others who oh. walk on our own property without invitation over. Isn't that trespassing? Well, listen, uh, it, why don't you just get really ecumenical, take <laughs> it both, because then you can have your trespasses and your debts forgiven. I mean, that's what—I mean, if you've got college debt and you could just yeah. pray this prayer, you get your student loan forgiven. Lord, forgive me of this Capital One debt that I have. <laughs> <laughs> But I don't have the power to forgive other people's Discover card debts. So, uh, no, yeah, absolutely. And honestly, both these words, they, they basically mean the same thing, trespass, debts, and they come uh, from uh, the Greek, which really probably is more rightly translated as debts, um, uh, more accurately anyway. Yeah, and it just gives you different nuances of what it means when we sin and what that, what that is like right. to God. It means we become indebted to, we have taken something that— we don't have the capacity to pay on our own, or that we have crossed boundaries. I think they're both really helpful. Yes, absolutely. So um, we, uh, we've we got some Scripture passages we want to share with you guys, and um, we're going to start off looking at the Psalms. Yes, yeah, so let's take a look at one of a really famous Psalm, um, Psalm 51. And I, if you remember, when you see these trans or these subscripts, in the Old Testament Psalms, like this one says, for the director of music, etc. Those are actually in the Hebrew Scripture. So this one says, for the director of music, a Psalm of David, when the prophet Nathan came to him after David had committed adultery with Bathsheba. So David had trespassed and has debts. So here's, I'm just going to read a few of the verses. 
Have mercy on me, O God, according to your unfailing love. According to your great compassion, blot out my transgressions. Wash away all my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. Cleanse me with hyssop and I will be clean. Wash me and I will be whiter than snow. Hide your face from my sins and blot out all my iniquity. And this is just a beautiful illustration of, in Scripture, crying out to God for forgiveness, uh, for cleanliness of heart. Um, and it's just a great model for us to recognize that that's something that we we ask for. God does, but we ask for. It's a beautiful passage. Mm-hmm. And then we have, uh, coming from Matthew. Um. Yeah, so I'm going to look at um, Matthew chapter 6 and Matthew chapter 18, and we're, these, these passages of Scripture will kind of help us talk about the relationship between our forgiveness of others and God's forgiveness of us. And we, we probably don't think about that often enough, um, how how whether or not we forgive one another um affects god's forgiveness of us um jesus kind of lays down some conditions there so at the uh in matthew's gospel um as jesus teaches on the lord's prayer after he does he has this passage from verses four in four in verses 14 and 15 he sort of bookends the the lord's prayer with this he says for if you forgive other people when they sin against you your heavenly Father will also forgive you, but if you do not forgive others their sins, your Father will not forgive your sins. Hmm. Then, um, in Matthew eighteen, sort of to 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 teach on forgiveness, Peter kind of comes up to Jesus, um, as Peter kind of did, um, and asks him the question about forgiveness, and Jesus then teaches um, a parable of the unmerciful servant. So I'm going to read that 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 parable and then how Jesus ends that, that teaching. So then Peter came to Jesus and asked, this is Matthew 18, verse 21. Uh, then Peter came to Jesus and asked, Lord, how many times shall I forgive my brother or sister who sins against me up to seven times, sort of perfect number. Uh, Jesus answered, I tell you not seven times, but 77 times. Therefore, the kingdom of heaven is like a king who wanted to settle accounts with his servants. As he began the settlement, a man who owed him 10,000 bags of gold was brought to him Since he was not able to pay, the master ordered that he and his wife and his children and all that he had be sold to repay the debt. At this, the servant fell on his knees before him. Be patient with me, he begged, and I will pay back everything. The servant's master took pity on him, canceled the debt, and let him go. But when the servant went out, he found one of his fellow servants who owed him a hundred silver coins. Uh, Pretty different uh, debt. Um, very different debt. He grabbed him and began to choke him. Pay back what you owe me, he demanded. His fellow servant fell to his knees and begged him, be patient with me and I will pay it back. But he refused. Instead, he went off and had the man thrown into prison until he could pay the debt. When the other servants saw what had happened, they were outraged and went and told their master everything he had, that had happened. Then the master called the servant in. You wicked servant, he said. I canceled all that debt of yours because you begged me to. Shouldn't you have had mercy on your fellow servant just as I had had on you? In anger, his master handed him over to the jailers to be tortured until he should pay back all he owed. And then Jesus ends that teaching. This is how my heavenly father will treat each of you unless you forgive your brother or sister from your heart. Mm -hmm. So that's pretty kind of harsh uh, if you think about it in terms of um, if we do not forgive others and then God's not going to forgive ours. But again, just as the the extreme... um, difference in debt that the the servant owed the master and then his servant owed him it's the same with us and god like our our debt to god is way bigger than any debt or sin trespass that somebody has against us and so the fact that god is willing to forgive us of our sins should also enable us to forgive one another Um, And so when we don't forgive one another, then why, the question is, why should God forgive us of ours? Mm -hmm. Um, So interesting, interesting, uh, I guess, topic for us to to delve into. And I do do think that this uh, plays on the conditional aspect of things. I think it was interesting that you kind of mentioned that 
um, earlier, um, there are conditions, right? Like God, God, God expects things out of us. If we're forgiven, we're, there's a sense of that we, we need to live that out um, to show that. Um, Michael Wilkins is a New Testament professor and scholar, has, has these words about, about this um, that I think are important. This is kind of a lengthy piece, but y'all, uh, I think it's important. Um, he says in his commentary on Matthew that the fifth petition of the Lord's Prayer addresses the disciples' debt of sin, and he translates ophelima, I think is how you say it, as debt, whereas Luke uses hamartia, sin, in his version. These are basically equal expressions, but with the additional nuance in Matthew that humans owe obedience to God. Sin creates an obligation or debt to God that we cannot possibly repay. This sentiment is commonly found in Judaism. Quote, forgive your neighbor the wrong he has done, and then your sins will be pardoned when you pray. And that's from Sirach. But it is radicalized in Jesus' ministry. A hallmark of his new covenant ministry is his expiation role in the forgiveness of sins, is the expiation role in the forgiveness of sins, which scandalized his opponents. He goes on to say that Jesus' disciples have responded to the, his charge to repent, and their sins are now forgiven, but they are not simply to relish their own state of forgiveness. They are also to forgive others. Those who have received forgiveness are so possessed with gratitude to God that they in turn will eagerly forgive those who are debtors to them. This does not teach that humans must forgive others before they can receive forgiveness themselves. Rather, forgiveness of others is proof that the disciple's sins are forgiven and he or she possesses salvation. Disciples are to forgive those who have wronged them to maintain a... And, uh, uh, who have wronged them to maintain a joyful experience of our salvation. Doing so serves as evidence that a person has truly been forgiven his or her debt of sin. If we don't forgive, it is evidence that we haven't experienced forgiveness ourselves. Um, and so, I mean, for Christians, I mean, if you if you are a student of any um Christian history, particularly the ancient history, that that the, the first generation church, the, the 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 look at read first and second Peter, for example. Um, the what what to do with enemies? How do we treat those who treat us wrong? Well, you do it through you serve them, you wash their feet, right? You you offer that grace, you offer that forgiveness, and um, you respond as Christ has responded to us. Um, and it's hard. This is hard. It is. It's very hard. <clears throat> One of the things that strikes me too is, uh, it, it's easy to simplify this into, if this happens, you must do this, mm. which is also true. Mm -hmm. If this happens, the kind of life that it unlocks and opens up for you, its natural consequence will be mm. your power and ability to forgive the sins of others who have sinned against you. There's also that, I think there's that nuance as well, because you're not going to be able to forgive other people, and, and, and at least in medium to large size things, um, without divine power. Right. And do you even right. know what, right. do you even right. know what that, what actual forgiveness looks like unless you've experienced the forgiveness that comes directly from God through this Holy Spirit? Oh, that's right. Yeah. So you can forgive in certain ways. It's, it's like, um, Forgive and forget is a, a non-spirit-filled way of forgiving. It's just the way, one way that humans know how to forgive outside and apart from the power of God. Right. Um, forgive in cold shoulder. Um, pretend like it doesn't exist and then <clears throat> cast aspersions and passive aggressiveness at somebody. Mm -hmm. That's one way, a non-spirit-filled way of forgiving. It's what we know without knowing what it means to have our sins truly forgiven. Right. And so you, there's in in my mind as I as I kind of think through this a little bit, because God will forgive your sins if you don't forgive others. You might end up harboring another sin that needs to be forgiven. Mm -hmm. God's work, you can't earn God's work that way. So what what else is going on there? It's almost like when you have experienced the forgiveness of your sins that you cried out to God for, you then understand and are enabled to truly 
forgive the sins of others and you want to, and it's now a part of your renewed nature. Mm. That's my riff. So um, if I may take a point of personal privilege here and— Granted. Thank you. And some transparency. You're not about to, like— Dish dirt on us? Are you like? No, no, no. Are no, we no, about no, to get no, in a fight? No, no, no. no. This is about, this is not about present company. Okay, just um, like I was getting really nervous. No, this no, is no. How, this has some conversations at home start. Like, let's talk. I need to be honest. <laughs> I need to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> um, so a few years ago, I was preaching on that text that uh, Alan just read, and as I was preparing that sermon that week. Uh, some of the stuff that I had gone through as a child kept coming up in my head. Yeah. Uh, abuse um, to a parent, from a parent. And it just kept coming up, kept coming up, kept coming up. So in the sermon, I told that story. I, I didn't go into any like gratuitous detail or anything, but the story basically, um, as a child, I was physically abused by a step parent um, pretty significantly. And to the point where uh, I was having to go through therapy in my adult age because it had the effects of that abuse had reared its ugly head. And so um, I'm telling that story, and I get to the end of the sermon where I basically end the sermon not with some, you know, and... I, I've called my stepdad, and I forgave him, and now we have a beautiful relationship, and everything is going well. What I said was, for so long in my life, I have not wanted to forgive him. I just have wanted it to be done, like just have nothing to do with it, not to offer forgiveness. And then I said, and I still don't want to forgive him, but I'm open to the possibility let us pray. Hmm. That's how it ended. That was it's one of the few times in that I have not done an invitation. Like I just ended and walked off the stage. Um I got more people just, you know, commenting about that. Um and the things going on in their lives and things and so um no, uh, forgiveness of others when they've wronged us is extremely difficult. But perhaps it starts with us being at least willing to, to, to have a conversation about it. Um, and there's this really great book that deals with this as well um, on kind of a – just a grand scale, if you will. Um, do you all remember in the early kind of mid-2000s that um, Amish schoolhouse in Pennsylvania that was mm-hmm. – um, where all those uh, kids were shot in Lancaster County. Lancaster County. Yeah. I believe so. There's a book called Amish Grace, and I'm going to uh, leave uh, a link in the show notes. Um, that whole, and I think it actually became a like a lifetime movie or something like that too, eventually. But um, Amish Grace is a fantastic book. The whole opening chapter of the book is like a detailed from the morning to the evening of that first day. Oh, wow. And it's just heart-wrenching. One of the things that came out about that story was how quickly the Amish community made it clear to the world the shooter is forgiven by us. To the point where people on the news, uh, people in the community were actually attacking, <laughs> were actually criticizing this community for how quick they were to forgive. Um, it's, it's an unbelievable book. Uh, the, the, the Amish take very seriously this teaching. They see that their own salvation is tied to it. This idea that if we are not willing to forgive others, we will not be forgiven. And so it's an interesting book that deals with that, and I, I highly encourage some y'all to read it because it really will make you think through, think through some of these issues in your personal life as well. The passage I'm going to read is from Daniel. We're going to look at a few pass, a couple of passages from Daniel chapter nine. 
And this really is just a prayer. Um, Now, therefore, O God, listen to the prayer of your servant and to his pleas for mercy. And for your own sake, O Lord, make your face to shine upon your sanctuary, which is desolate. O my God, incline your ear and hear. Open your eyes and see our desolations. And the city that is called by your name. For we do not present our pleas before you because of our righteousness, but because of your great mercy. O Lord, hear. O Lord, forgive. O Lord, pay attention and act. Delay not for your own sake, O my God, because your city and your people are called by your name. What a powerful prayer. I, that, that line in there, um, for we do not present our pleas before you because of our, right, of our righteousness, but because of your great mercy. O oh Lord, hear. O oh Lord, forgive. O oh Lord, pay attention and act. Powerful. And, Man, it really is. This is is such good stuff. It's really at the heart of our faith. Yes. And there's an intricate connection between one we ha- we have to be forgiven mm-hmm. by God, mm-hmm. and uh, the connection between how we extend that and share that with others. It, it's amazing. So it's like sometimes it's hard to ask for forgiveness from God. Um, yes for many reasons. One might be that you don't know that you've done something wrong or you don't believe you've done something wrong. The other is the same reason that it's hard to confess anything. Right. You know, we can deceive ourselves, so to speak. Right. Um, and then forgiving others is hard because there's a lot of a lot of traps that go in there. A couple of things that I like to, to think of just as little one-liners. Um, to forgive somebody doesn't mean that it's okay, mm-hmm. that what happened is okay. Mm-hmm. To forgive somebody doesn't mean that you are reconciled to them. Because forgiveness and reconciliation are two separate things Mm -hmm. that may ideally go together, but they're not the same process, Mm -hmm. because forgiveness takes one and reconciliation takes two. Um, Sometimes it takes time and a lot of help, Mm -hmm. Um, and it's not something that you can just do. Mm -hmm. One of the things that makes forgiveness hard sometimes is that um, the debt that somebody has taken from us, it's like you have done something to me and it's left this hole or this debt in my life, most of the time, a a person can't pay it back. Mm -hmm. They just can't. They don't have what it takes. Nobody has what it takes. That's why we're thankful that God pays debts, Mm. because he can pay their debt on their behalf in your life. And so if they can't pay up anyway, uh, then being a debt collector is kind of fruitless. Um, So there's just a few thoughts that come to my mind, you know, that I've either read through or struggled with my own life of forgiveness. Mm-hmm. Gosh, that's so good, Jim. You need. <laughs> should, you think I should be a preacher? Maybe that line, being a debt collector. How did you say it? Being a debt collector is it fruit? Is it fr- uh, fruitful or something? Isn't fruitful? I just have to rewind and listen to it again. Yeah, I just do that. Everybody, rewind right now. Stop it. Right. Rewind. I'm really, I'm really having a hard time forgiving you right now of you just not answering the question that I had. But that's okay. Is rewind a thing? <laughs> like, no, I actually don't remember what I said. <laughs> Is rewind a thing? Because that was like when you had videotape. Listen, video be history. kind and right. rewind. I'll be kind and rewind, yes. Yes. I mean, um, it's like the worst thing. Be kind and Talk about forgiving back. somebody. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. Um, I had this idea, I had this question. How do we ask for pardon or how do we ask for forgiveness um, in our lives? Um, you know, I guess originally when I was thinking about this, it was it seemed to be kind of simple in the fact that Lord, forgive me. But then the more I got to thinking about it, asking for pardon, asking for forgiveness is 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 it call it calls for self introspection, right? It calls for us to look into ourselves. Uh, what is it um, uh, uh, from Psalm one thirty nine? I think it is. Uh, Search me and know me, O God. Um, man, that's a that's a hard prayer to pray sometimes for me, anyway. Um, when we do the uh, when we do the institution of the Lord's Supper and we're getting ready for the confession and pardon piece, um, we have not been an obedient church. We have failed to do do, to do your will. Um, I mean, it is. If you slow down and listen to those words, I mean, it's 
incredibly piercing to the soul. Well, uh, what is it? Um, the first step is admitting you have a problem. Mm -hmm. um, and, yeah, and AA, yeah. And, and well, and like, so I think it's kind of what Jim was saying. It's like, it's realizing that you either one, have unforgiveness in your heart um, or two, that you are in need for forgive forgiveness from God, from something, mm -hmm. you know, and, and un unforgiveness for somebody else is something that you need God to forgive you of as well. <laughs> so, um, I don't know about you guys, but it's like, if, if, if you, if somebody has done something to you, it's easy to think that you've forgiven them as long as you don't see them. <laughs> mm. yeah. like, I mean, like, right. Like That's as long right. as there's, yes. if there's distance between us and yes. you don't have to see them or, um, <laughs> But it's like the moment you see that person, you know whether or not you've either forgiven them or not. I mean, yes. you know what I mean? So, yeah. Um, but it's it's easy to to think you've forgiven somebody when for whatever reason there's distance um, or you just you you create that distance after they've done something to you. Mm -hmm. um, so it's it's. It, 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 we can fool ourselves, I guess was what I'm saying. We can fool ourselves into thinking that we have forgiveness um, yeah, or forgiven somebody. So yeah. something to be on the lookout for. And I would think that um, I would, like that's absolutely a thing that can happen, but I wouldn't get upset about it if you find that to be true. Sure. Uh, because it's this isn't a zero-sum game where God has given you the grace to release what you're able to release at a certain time, mm -hmm. right? Like if you're in good faith and goodwill seeking forgiveness, you're going to get as far as you need to get. And there's always deeper levels. And when you find a deeper level, it doesn't mean that you never did the thing to begin with. It just means that now's the time where God's going to invite you and give you the grace to let go of even more. Right. Um, and, and honestly, our brains are self-protective and Absolutely. we are, we are right. fragile. We don't know how much things hurt. Yeah. We do not know how much things are like right now. We're what X number of years after the onsla onslaught of the COVID pandemic. Mm -hmm. We we think we're good. We think we know what happened to us, but we don't know what happened to us. Yeah, yeah. You think about this with grief and loss. You you think you know what happened to you, but you don't know what happened mm -hmm. to you. Your mm -hmm. brain has protected you. Your body's protected you. Um, you've consciously and or unconsciously let things go, and that happens when we need to forgive too. Mm -hmm. So you. Yeah, you're going to run up on somebody or something or have some memory. Just don't, I, my, my, my hope would be that you just don't despair that you never did it right to begin with. Don't despair mm, about that. Sure, absolutely. Mm -hmm. God gave you the grace to do what you could do. Mm -hmm. And now, 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 now ask him for more. Mm. Yeah, that's absolutely right. And listen, miracles happen. Relationships get restored. Hearts or, get or, healed. And relationships you can be miraculously set free from to move on. Amen. Yeah, amen. 100%. Right? Yeah. Absolutely. We, I think we also, we, we, we sometimes think that the relationships, <laughs> yes. we just, we've got to keep these relationships forever. And yeah, I don't no. think that's always the case. Yeah. Um, and so, right. yeah, the miracle could be like, see ya. <laughs> I mean, even in the Bible, you have relationships that get, that get strained and, um, and they have to go their separate ways. Um, yeah, let me, let me tell you real quick. We're, uh, talking about Jacob and Esau over at our church yeah. here this week. Yeah. Yeah. They had stress. They came back together for that one period of time, blessed yeah. each other forward, and then I don't know that they ever saw each other again. That's it, yeah. Sounds right, yeah. They had the act of reconnection and forgiveness. It was good for their soul. Mm -hmm. They may not have ever come in contact again. Well, how about Joseph and his brothers, where they go years, years, and the harboring of the resentment and the hurt and the stuff that Joseph goes through um, while he's in Egypt— until he sees them again. And then when he sees them, you see that pain bubble up because he doesn't mm -hmm. really know how to respond to that mm. until there's a moment where he kind of turns it over to God. And that whole line of what you meant for evil, God, you know, he kind of says, he kind of gives it over at that point, says, yes, it hurt. <laughs> yes, it was evil, but God has redeemed it. Hmm. God has done whatever, you know, what only God can do. Um, you know what's amazing to me is that that is the end of the book of Genesis. Genesis. The, book, the book where <laughs> the book where we read that God creates the world out of nothing. Yeah. 
And God's great work at the end of Genesis is the act of forgiveness. Now, I know there's oh. other thing, the building of a nation, yeah. you know, all the great setup. But what if, what if uh, sometimes you're looking for God to do an amazing, great work in your life, and the work is to forgive? Wow. Mm. You know? Wow. Like, I want to get, you know, start a nation or fix the world or what's my right. path and career, and maybe God's call is... Because that's big work. Right. God, God, God put all these events together for the forgiveness and right. whatever. I mean, don't don't discount that as a great work of God. Oh, it oh, is. My. I mean, what is the first thing? I mean, what does God do in the beginning? As you said, He brings order to the chaos. Mm. There's definitely chaos at the end of the Book of Genesis too, and He's bringing order to the chaos by redeeming a family. Awesome. Um, yeah, it is awesome. So uh, John Wesley, in his explanation, explan- explanatory, why is that such a hard... Like, if you go back episodes, <laughs> explanatory notes on the New Testament, um, when it comes to the Lord's Prayer, he's been hitting each petition and kind of using them as prayer points for a longer prayer of his, and he says for this, I love his wording, it's just real simple. He says, "'Give us, O Lord, redemption in thy blood, even the forgiveness of sins, as thou enablest us freely and fully to forgive every man, so do thou forgive all our trespasses. So give us, O Lord, redemption. Forgive us of our sins. Enable us to freely and fully forgive everyone so that you will forgive us of our trespasses. And whether or not this is easy for us to forgive or hard for us to forgive or we have reconciliation or never have reconciliation, I think it's important, and this is where I've learned in my life, that if I'm at least open to for be forgiving others, the prayer I should be praying is, Lord, redeem me, forgive me, and give me the strength through, your, through the presence of your Holy Spirit to forgive others. And trust that. Just trust that God is doing a, doing a miraculous work in all of us. Um, it is it is not easy, hmm. but it is necessary, and it's powerful, and it's redemptive, and it is it is a it's, it's on this side of heaven. It is an image. Forgiveness of others is an image of God's grace in our lives, and His forgiveness of us. Truth. Mm. All right. Well, um, I think we are coming to the end of this episode. Um, um, yeah, we've really, I mean, we've all forgiven everybody we've ever needed to. We have all the forgiveness we, have, we yes, need. I yes, mean, right. 45 minutes is perfect. So we're done. Yeah. We're yeah, good. I think we're good. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. I'm still having trouble forgiving Freddie Freeman and his agent. Um, well, that's, yeah. That's I think Freddie agent. Freeman's having trouble forgiving <laughs> his agent. <sighs> I'm telling yeah. you. But you know the good news? The Braves are the defending world champions, so we'll there just uh, we'll, and and they're just looking so good right now. So um, everybody's <laughs> yeah, like the Mets, the Mets, the Mets. We've and got, said, we've got a lot of nerdy season. passions over here between sports and Star Wars, <laughs> UGA and Atlanta. We've yeah. got it going on over here. We got it going on. Absolutely, absolutely. All right. Well, in our next episode, we'll be looking at the sixth petition. Um, and, uh, we, and you know what I didn't do? I didn't write that down. So, oh, here it is. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, from evil. Amen. Evil. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we hope that you will join in for that. As always, the Podkesis podcast is a proud member of the Spirit and Truth podcasting network. Spirit and Truth is a movement of Wesleyan minded Christians seeking to awaken and equip the 21st century church through the power of the Holy Spirit to share the gospel and to make disciples of Jesus Christ. We long to see a new movement of Christians who are empowered by the Spirit, rooted in the truth, and mobilized for the mission. For information and resources, visit spiritandtruth.life. And you've got the Spirit and Truth people coming to your church, don't you, Alan? Absolutely, in the end of August. Man, it's going to be awesome. Last weekend in August, we've got the Spirit and Truth guys coming over. So if you're in the Metter, Georgia area... yes. We'd love to have uh, your people uh, yeah. or you come. So, yeah. It's going to be awesome. It's going to be and, awesome. Yeah. And I I was thinking just the other day about the the uh, conference we went to. When was that? Was it March? I guess it March. was. March. March. Yeah. 72 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> 
Um, how how awesome that uh, time was for us to be there with friends, but also just kind of a time of renewal. And actually, it got me to thinking of other times of renewal I had been through, and I, I shared with Alan and Jim earlier today. I've been thinking a lot about um, a time I went to worship at the Brownsville, Brownsville Revival in Pensacola, Florida, which was a thing back in the late 90s, early 2000s, kind of an outpouring of God's Spirit on that area. Um, and I've just been listening to the music that had uh, came out of that in an album. Um, and it's just, that was an amazing time as well. I remember that specifically of just God speaking and a special touch there. So um, I don't know. I don't know why I was told that story. Just in the, talking about spirit and truth got me thinking about that as well. Um, some good stuff. But spirit and truth coming to matter. So we're excited about them coming yeah. on. Right? If y'all can <clears throat> come even, Alan, I imagine your church is putting out dates and stuff. Oh, yeah. People can join. Uh, there's public stuff as well as the stuff that's just for your church. Oh, yeah. Well, they, all of it's going to be public. So, okay. Um, but, yeah. So Thursday through Sunday, uh, the last weekend of August. I can't remember the dates right now. So, wow. So, so good. Uh, it's going to be board. great. Yeah, be 25th good. through the 28th. There you go. These these. These folks are our friends. They love they love Jesus. They, they love are Jesus. so anointed by the Spirit of God. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, it just it would help, you know. Listen, they just care about you knowing yeah. the Lord deeply. So Yes, very much so. Yeah. Hit us up on social media at Potakesis is where you can find us. Um, you can um, also call our voicemail, 404 635 6679 As always, leave a five star rating and review on Apple iTunes. And we look forward to talking to y'all later. We hope you have a great and blessed day. Mm-hmm.